Kathy Meek from Impact 2000, which is a, a democratic organization, uh, Tom Heffler uh, from the NRCC, which is a Republican organization, Tim Dixon from Project 500, which is a democratic organization. Kathy first. Uh, my short list would be the New York Senate, the Pennsylvania Senate, the Florida Senate, the Michigan Senate, and Arizona House and Senate be my short list. Uh, is it is it true that both parties are, are uh, going at this hammer and tong in those uh, races unlike anything that uh, has ever happened before? Yeah, very much so. Um, there's a lot on the line when you've got states losing two or three congressional districts or picking up three or four or <coughs> California six or seven. We can't afford to, to not be involved full force this time around. Same list, Tom Heffler? Uh, I'm sorry, did you say California too? <laughs> I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. I, I think I would have to add California definitely to that list. I think, too, it's also very important to look at the strategic situation as we go into the election. If we could redistrict today based on what's in place today, the Democrats control the redistricting process from top to bottom uh, for 143 seats. <coughs> the Republicans control redistricting from top to bottom for 12 seats. And 273 seats are uh, in the <coughs> split control column. And if you look at uh, the states of Texas, Pennsylvania, New York, Indiana, Illinois, Florida, and California, you're already up to 187 that could switch one way or the other. Add uh, Michigan in that, and you get a, another 18. So uh, we're looking at a situation here where it's vital for us to hang on to uh, what we have in order just to be in a divided or split position on control, whereas the Democrats in many of these states are looking at, at taking full control. Uh, Tim, well, would, you say, add, uh, would you add to the list? Well, I'd say the list would pretty much uh, stay the same. One of the things that um, we have to notice is that this has been a battle either pitched or not so heavily pitched uh, for about seven years. Um, when the, Demo when the uh, Republicans launched, the 1991 plan. Um, we see about 110 congressional districts where we have a shot at gaining some level of control. Uh, the states that um, both Kathy and Tom mentioned, I wouldn't have much disagreement with. Or before we go to that, I want to come back, however, to on redistricting and make sure that these folks who spent a lot of time here and have spent uh, a couple years studying this subject have an opportunity to say anything that they came to say. Why is this election important and what's going to happen after it? I, I think that we've practically covered uh, the turf on this. Uh, again, to mention that uh, the day after the election will tally up who has control of what states. And, and in the case of those key legislatures and governorships, uh, it's going to make the deciding difference. You have to have the technology to be at the table and to react <laughs> to what's going on and to understand uh, what blue smoke and mirrors are being uh, put forth by the other side either way, uh, but uh, computers are no substitute for having control, and indeed the, the people in control set the timetable. There are two other factors that are at large uh, in terms of redistricting besides the elections and technology. Uh, one of them is uh, the uh, voting rights issue. So uh, that's going to play uh, uh, very heavily and uh, the Democrats are going to be challenged in a, a lot of urban areas in two respects. Uh, one is to uh, protect the minority districts that they already own, uh, which are low in population, and they're going to have to search for uh, more people for all those districts. And two, uh, particularly at the legislative and the county and the local level, uh, there are going to be a lot of moves to create minority seats where they did not, uh, where they were not before. Tim, Kathy? Well, I'd just add that, um, you know, the importance of, of these state legislative elections is, as Tom said, you're talking about the control. If you've got the technical equipment at the table but you don't have the votes, um, you don't, you're, you're in big trouble when you're talking about where these districts are moving to and where they're being taken from, and very probably control of the majority in the U.S. House next time around, um, which is why 
we've been so busy at the state level for these last few years. Um, I would like to comment on Tom's um, point on the voting rights issue, however, and just to say that the Democrats are not interested in seeing minorities packed into districts. We're interested in the community as a whole and what's best for everybody concerned on that issue. That in the past sometimes is translated into minorities get put into uh, uh, white uh, incumbent Democrat districts in order to get them elected to office. So uh, the Voting Rights Act is, is pretty specific in terms of what constitutes packing and what constitutes fracturing. And in many cases, it's, in most cases, it's been the Democrats who have been resisting the uh, aspirations of, of minority uh, uh, groups to get the districts uh, to elect candidates of their choice. And it's also been the Democrats who have been the party of the minority interests throughout the last several decades, and, and I might add are most interested in the adjustment of the, uh, of the census when it comes to having an accurate count of the people who are most undercounted time and again, which would include the minority districts in the urban areas. And um, as long as non-minority uh, members uh, aren't determining what those interests will be. God, I love this. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> well, I was I was supposed to call on Tim now, but uh, it doesn't seem likely that that he is uh, he is an impartial tiebreaker. I, 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 I think Kathy's right, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the main characteristic about this debate is it really didn't get uh, drummed up uh, to a very loud degree until the Republicans failed uh, so greatly in 1988 to uh, bring in uh, Republican state legislative uh, majorities where they wanted to. For seven years, the Republicans have been talking about, again, their 1991 plan where they were going to gain a majority. Now they've decided since they aren't going to gain a majority uh, where they need to in legislative uh, battlegrounds for redistricting, that they'd better start pursuing a legal strategy and start complaining about the unfairness of redistricting. The rules have been the same uh, since we began this process in the Constitution about redistricting. Um, what we're about in this election is finalizing who those legislative chambers are going to be that are going to do the redistricting, and, and then I guess we'll go to uh, see what kind of uh, battlegrounds exist in the courts. One minor correction. The rules have not been the same. The rules changed in 1982 with the amendments to the Voting Rights Act, Title II. If you can draw a majority minority district, you now have to do it. It is no longer an intense test. It is a results test. If the district can be drawn, it has to be drawn. Now, you want to see some interesting, the most interesting aspect of this entire election will not be this election, but it will be the first meeting in that legislative basement when uh, they sit down with their lawyers and they say, oh, you can't start by drawing this line to protect the speaker and the whip. You have to start by drawing the minority districts in your state. 